Welcome back. The moment has arrived. Excel spreadsheet time. So we are going to build an Excel spreadsheet that will automate this process of the Euclidean algorithm and the extended Euclidean algorithm. I'm planning uh, some bonus opportunities for writing a program um, in whatever language you prefer that completes this process. All I'll ask is that you don't use the mod operator, okay, because that makes it kind of boring. So I want you to, to use other things, um, but I'll, I'll post more details about that soon, okay? So what we're going to do is look at the example that we are working on in the last video with 123 and 2347. And what we're going to do is go to our Excel, uh, make a Excel file to complete this process. So I'm going to start blank, okay? Maybe. Okay, so I am going to think about my Euclidean algorithm, okay? With the Euclidean algorithm, we've got two inputs. I'm going to call them A and B. We've got um, a quotient, and we've got a remainder, okay? So let's just think about what we want these values to uh, work out to be. So these two cells here should be our input cells. So we should be able to input our values here. So these are always going to be changing depending on what we want. Um, so I'm going to be inputting these two values. Okay. So notice if we go back to our work, we got a quotient of 19 and a remainder of 10. So we want to take and divide um, these numbers, right, to get the quotient. However, we don't want 19.08. We want it to round down to the nearest integer. So what we're going to do, we're going to round int, so always down, right, because we don't want to round up. If we round up, then we'd get uh, we might get the, the higher integer and we might go over our input. Okay. Then our remainder, and we could we could use a mod operator here, right? We could do mod, but that'd be boring. So I'm going to um, I'm gonna take A and subtract B times our quotient. And there's my 10, okay? So it's nice to have a worked out example when you're trying to build this just to make sure that you're doing everything right, okay? Because I expect you to build this on your own. I'm not going to post the solutions, so make sure that you're following along here. Um, okay, so now that's one loop of our Euclidean algorithm. Now remember, our divisor becomes our dividend. And we, we can't just input 230 or 2347 because we want them to always be changing. So we want them to reference those cells. Okay. Now these calculations will stay the same, so I can drag and drop those. And just to verify that everything's looking okay, 12 and 3. That looks good. Okay. okay. Now everything should be good to drag and drop this. So remember these columns are our remainders. So we've got the last non-zero remainder is one. So from this spreadsheet, I can see that my GCD is one. Let's just try out one more example to make sure that we've got the right idea here. Okay. A GCD of one there. Let's see what other ones did we do here. Let's plug those in. Make sure that our are... 
Oh, we did uh, two and seven, right? And note, it's just okay, and this is an important kind of functionality thing, right? You don't want to force your user to input this in a certain order, right? So it'll just switch it on the next round, so that's okay. GCD of one, that's good. Okay, let's go back to this example and let's build the extended Euclidean algorithm portion. All right, now I'm gonna need some initial values here. So I'm gonna insert two rows here. And what these are, this one, zero, zero, one, these are my coefficients for my linear combination, okay? So, oops, we actually need that there, I think. So this column, that's a coefficient for A. This column, coefficients for B, okay? And they should always equal the sum. So this times this plus this times this should equal this, okay? All right, so every time I build this, I have to think a little bit. And what helps me understand what I'm doing here is um, this statement here. And this is an excerpt from your book, so um, you can read through and see if that makes more sense. You could also you know, read through the proof um, and see if that makes any more sense. But um, So what we're going to do is just be taking in uh, consideration are quotients from each of those rows. So what we're going to do, so we're going to go two above, so one minus our quotient times our second input. Now, um, we're going to do the same thing over here, but we want to make sure to maintain that C column. So I'm going to put a um, dollar sign there to make sure that my quotient stays in um, column C. I want my E's to move to F, so it's going to be okay when I drag it to the right. So this does the same thing we take two above and subtract one above times my quotient, okay? Now, just to kind of demonstrate what this is doing here, look what's happening. So, um, let's see, equals value, um, remainder, okay, is equal to, Two, oops, it's equal to uh, this coefficient equals value, and you don't need to add this part. I'm just adding it in to kind of show you what's going on here. Coefficient times a. plus this coefficient, oops, plus this coefficient times B So this is just kind of writing it out for you, so you can see times b. Okay, and then let's just check the arithmetic there instead of just writing it out there so we can see what's happening. Or we probably should just click a button like show calculations or something, but uh, well, is equal to coefficient times a plus coefficient times 
B. So we get 10, right? So this is calculating, uh, or it's, it's putting a linear combination in for each of those remainders. And it's changing it at each step so that eventually our remainder will be 1. So it's taking this 10, substituting it in for 3, substituting it for 1, just like we did in our process, okay? So kind of makes sense, hopefully. So let's drag and drop, see what happens. Oh, that's looking good, right? Let's drag and drop these guys and see what happens. Uh-oh. Did I drag and drop wrong? Oh, I've got to keep those constant um, referenced, constantly referenced to get the one. Oh, yeah, because my it's always going to be a and B there for those values, those, uh, so, again, this is kind of an aside, okay, so this is a little bit further than we need to take it, so don't worry. Um, there we go. And these guys, I'm just going to make them always those input values. So this might not, this might be kind of nice for you guys to build just to have a um, kind of a written out version of the calculations within this portion, um, but but this portion isn't necessary. I was just hoping to demonstrate what's happening with all these values, okay? Because sometimes people have a difficult time interpreting their spreadsheet once they get it. Um, but if you build it on your own, I think that's one hurdle that will help. Um, and based on where you place all this stuff, like I have an extra row here, I don't know why, but um, your values might be the same, so it's or different, or your your cell labels. Okay, so it's important to kind of make sure you've got going on um, the right stuff here. Um, so yeah, let's try let's try one more. Let's try sixteen and seventeen. Okay, just like we thought in the last example, right? Negative one and one. Um, let's try that two and seven. Okay. So inverse of two mod seven is negative three. Okay, so so this will automate those inverses for us, okay? All right, let me know how that goes. Let me know if you have questions. Build your own spreadsheet. I'm not emailing it to you. Have a good day.